my friends. Today we're going to be chatting about a luxury brand that is incredibly popular, yet I'm not sure how much we actually know about them, which as you probably guessed from the title is going to be Von Cleef, a brand that is often viewed as a one trick pony, even though there is so much more to know and appreciate about this brand other than just their infamous Alhambra line. So if you'd like to know the truth about One Cleave, everything that there is to know about this brand, including their history and where they started, all the way to what pieces they currently have in production and which one of those are worth your money, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Whether you're into luxury fashion or not, whether you have heard the brand name Von Cleef and Arpel or not, it doesn't really matter. I can guarantee one thing, which is that you have seen this particular piece, which is their iconic and infamous Alhambra necklace, a piece that could be mentioned on the same page with a Chanel classic flap, an Hermes Birkin, even a Balmain blazer, pieces that are really, really easily recognized and appeal to a wide audience. But what I think makes this piece stand out from the crowd is that it is quite a specific look, while let's say a Birkin or a Chanel classic flap can be adapted to suit your style. I think this particular necklace or bracelet or even ring has a really specific look to it. It definitely has that ladies who lunch feel and that refined elegance to it, which is why I don't think that it suits as many people as let's say a Chanel classic flap or a Birkin would, because it is a little bit more restricted in terms of what you can do with it. It's definitely really proper, pretty, and almost a little bit old school. Not to say that you cannot make it look and feel contemporary, but I feel like they can give you a hard time, but thankfully there is a lot more to One Cleave than just this one collection, which is what we'll be looking at today. But in order to truly understand the ethos of One Cleave, why they are so innovative and how and why they stand out from the crowd of jewelers, we actually have to go back to 1895 and talk about a wedding. The wedding between two extremely prestigious and well-known families in the diamond industry. The Arpels who dealt in gemstones and the Van Cleves who were known as diamond brokers. So as you can imagine, Alfred and Estelle had a lot more in common than just love. They were both raised in this industry. So they not only had an extreme amount of knowledge, but also a passion for innovation and a passion to fill the gaps, the holes in this market that they both had an extremely in-depth understanding of. So it's no surprise that after a decade of brainstorming, they ended up introducing their own brand, One Cliff and our pal, which now you know where the name comes from, with the opening of their first boutique on Place One Dome in Paris. And one thing that we have to say about their early years creations that come from the first few decades is that really these pieces were not that commercial, they mainly focused on creating pieces for the rich and famous and for the true collectors and insiders because their pieces really had no limit in terms of creativity. Most of their pieces were all about innovation and creating things that hadn't been done before or no one had had the courage to do so. I mean, some of their early pieces are just mind-blowing looking back now. They crafted these sculptures fully out of precious stones and precious metals. They had a collection that combined wood with diamonds and precious stones, which might have not been a revolutionary idea even back then, but it had never been done with that level of sophistication, which is definitely a value that you can still see in one cleave pieces. Some of their ideas are not groundbreaking, but the way the individual pieces are executed is just so refined and so sophisticated. That's what I think really makes this brand stand out, but their early pieces are not ones that you'll still find in boutiques these days. I think the first breakthrough that you have to know of if you would like to become a contemporary customer of Von Cleef, someone who appreciates their pieces that are still in production to this day, that invention happened in 1933 when they introduced a special type of setting. And I do apologize for my pronunciation. I am probably going to butcher it, but it's called or it was called the Certi Mysterio, also known as the mystery setting, which allowed pieces to be filled with color by using an abundance of gemstones that were set almost invisibly. There wasn't any visible metal that held the gemstones onto the piece. They almost looked like 
just gemstones floating in the air, which created some of the most beautiful graphic and bold pieces. Because if you know anything about setting gemstones and setting diamonds, if you have ever taken a closer look at a piece of jewelry, you probably noticed the little prongs that actually set and hold the gemstones, mainly diamonds, onto the pieces of jewelry. Whereas this really innovative type of setting allowed the metal to become virtually invisible and even though it's something that was invented 90 years ago back in 1933 it is one that is in production it is something that von Cleef uses to this day on some of their high jewelry pieces so that was one of the first breakthrough they really put von Cleef on the map and then the next one in my humble opinion and I am not a jewelry expert I am not a jewelry aficionado but I can share with you my favorite pieces which my next favorite piece from Van Cleef that I wanted to put on your radar really quick was the so-called I believe it's called the Cadena watch which is a piece that you can still pick up which has been redone and reiterated in different metals with different finishes over the years but it is one of the most beautiful and discreet pieces to me this is a quintessentially French piece because it has this element of almost je ne sais quoi you're not really sure what you're looking at but you know that there is more to this piece than just it being a bracelet but it is a really bold statement piece that also happens to tell the time but only if you know how to look at it because the face of the watch is really discreetly hidden at an angle so you have to look at it from a certain angle to be able to tell the time. Jumping ahead roughly 30 years to 1968 we arrive at the launch of the Alhambra collection which as we discussed is to this day, the piece that Von Cleef and Arpel is most well known for. And it is a collection that has been re-envisioned and reinterpreted in several different finishes, set with different stones and diamonds. But really the inspiration remained untouched, which is the four-leaf clover, which is supposed to be a lucky charm and a lucky talisman. And it is a piece that we'll definitely come back to. I'll circle back to this and we'll discuss the different sizes it comes in, the different colors, and the different price ranges and whether I think it is something that is worth investing in or not. But before we do that, there are a few more collections that I do think are worth mentioning. And if you're going to walk into one cleave, these are pieces that are worth knowing about. And we have to jump quite a bit to get to the next noteworthy collection, in my opinion at least. And it isn't noteworthy for the right reasons because it is a collection that is really beloved. A lot of people adore this collection, but in my humble opinion, it looks quite cheap, which it looks the way it does for a reason, but personally, it's just not an aesthetic that I appreciate and I feel like I haven't even told you what we're talking about. But we're getting to 2003 when the so-called Free Bowl collection was introduced, which is this collection of heart-shaped, well, flowers that have these heart-shaped petals to them. And each and every single piece in this collection has this mirror, super highly polished gold finish. The pieces are really lightweight, which they're supposed to be that way because the whole idea behind this collection is that you really get the beauty of these pieces when you see them in motion as you move your hand or as you move your body depending on which piece you pick up. These pieces are supposed to move as flowers and the petals of flowers would in the wind which I completely understand why they have to be so lightweight, why they have to be so sort of malleable and why they have this high shine polish finish to them so they sparkle beautifully and they scatter light a lot better than any other gold finish would but exactly because of those very reasons these pieces have just always felt incredibly lackluster to me to be really honest they kind of look like pieces that you'd find at claire's to me at least i've seen several people wearing these not only in person but also on social media and i never really understand the hype because they genuinely seem like pieces that you could get from honestly the dollar store but that is just my humble opinion if you are into more delicate and this sort of aesthetic of flowers and little sparkly stones, it is something that you'll enjoy. I have no doubt that the craftsmanship is outstanding and nothing like you've ever seen. And last but not least, before we discuss which are the pieces that in my opinion are worth buying from Von Cleave, there is one more piece that I wanted to give a shout out to, which I know is not going to appeal to many people, but it's a piece that I love the idea and the design of, even though it's not something that I would ever purchase for myself. But it's a piece that was awarded, I think the 
best ladies watch back in 2010 and it is the most adorable design call me hopeless romantic but i'm a sucker for anything like this which is a watch that i believe is called and again forgive my pronunciation but i believe it's called pont des amoureux i tried which translates to lover's bridge which features a lady and a gentleman on two ends of a bridge and as time goes on they get closer and closer and closer closer to each other on the face of the watch when at midnight they finally meet. Yes, call me hopeless romantic, call me cheesy, but it is the kind of design that I just love the idea of. Again, it's not something that I would personally wear, but if you are a romantic yourself and you don't mind spending, I can't remember the exact price, but probably nearly a hundred thousand dollars if not more it is something that is still very much in production and finally let's move on to talking about which pieces are worth buying from one cleave at this point at least in my humble opinion and i'm sure most of you are going to be interested in my thoughts on the alumbra line which as I said at the beginning of this video i do think that it is a really specific look i don't think that it I almost said it, I don't think it appeals to as wide of an audience as some other pieces, which is not the case because obviously it is insanely popular, but I don't think it suits as many people as let's say a Cartier love bracelet would, which I don't think that they are comparable in terms of the design, the style, what they would add to your collection. But I do think that it is an equally popular piece. And while I think that a Cartier love bracelet can be worn by a lot of people, the same thing cannot be said about the Alhambra line. I do think that it is a really specific ladies who launch conservative almost uptight look and feel it is really traditional and quite ladylike but the good thing is that it does come in several different sizes so the alhambra collection currently comes in three different sizes it starts with the sweet alhambra which is the smallest then you move on to the vintage alhambra and then the largest is going to be the magic alhambra line my personal favorite is the sweet alhambra line that's the piece that i started my own one cleave collection with and the one that i would recommend for you to start with too, not only because they are the most reasonably priced, but because they're quite small, you can tweak and adapt them depending on what other pieces you layer these pieces with. So if you have a little bit more of a rock and roll aesthetic and you buy a sweet Alhambra, you can definitely make it look and feel a little bit more hip by layering it with some more statement bought pieces. Whereas if you go for the vintage Alhambra line, those pieces really look best on their own and if it's not an aesthetic that suits you i think you're going to have a hard time styling and wearing it on a regular basis so i would actually suggest starting with the sweet all umbra line either picking up a bracelet or a necklace from that collection which is going to set you back around 1700 dollars now obviously prices will vary depending on which stone you go for but that's kind of the starting point which i don't think is that unreasonable considering how much this piece will add to your collection it is the perfect piece to add a pop of color to any outfit and speaking of color yes these pieces do come in several different colors they do come out with seasonal colors but the sweet alhambra line the vintage alhambra and even the magic you will mainly find in three to four different colors well i think there is blue and green which green is malachite all the different colors mean different gemstones but I think those can be tougher to find, but the three colors that will be a staple are going to be Onyx, which makes the pieces black, Mother of Pearl, which are the white pieces, and then Carnelian, which are the red pieces. And then as I mentioned, there's also green, which is Malachite, and then there is a blue stone that they also use. Or you can of course go for these pieces set all with diamonds in a pave finish or just in plain hammered gold. But I think if you're going to go for one cleave, your best bet is to go for one of their pops of color considering that that will not only add a beautiful pop of color to any outfit and just a burst of color which you can play around with you can layer it with different pieces but it will also make the little pearl details most visible that's really where i would start now if you want to go for the full one cleave experience of course you're going to opt for one of their long necklaces which do come in different length in different sizes with the motifs being different sizes i would say to again go for the sweet alhambra line which you can pick up i think in a 16 motif which you can twist and turn you can wear it on its own you can layer it with different pieces you can even make it into a bracelet and i think that bracelet is around 
Last time I checked, it was around $8,500. Whereas if you wanted to go for the traditional vintage Alhambra long necklace, which I think features 20 motifs, that piece is going to be, I mean, twice the price, $17,000. Again, it varies depending on which finish you pick it up in. You can go up if you want to get it in full pave diamond, or you can go down if you just want to get it with a hammered gold finish. But I think getting the Sweet All Umber line or introducing yourself to the brand with the Sweet All Umber line is the best way to go about it. But what else does Von Cleef have to offer beyond their Alhambra collection? Well, thankfully there's a lot more to choose from and the next collection that I would like to put on your radar is going to be their so-called Pearl or Perlate collection. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but it is not to be confused with actual pearls. This collection features pearl-like gold beads and there are two main variations within this collection. The Pearl Signature Collection, which features these incredible, solid, heavy, substantial, bold bracelets with the Van Cleef signature on them. Or the other design in this collection is going to be the Pearl Clover design, which borrows inspiration from the Alhambra line. So if you love the Alhambra line, but it is just a little bit too delicate for your liking, this is definitely a range that you can familiarize yourself with because it features little diamond clovers on top of the already existing pearly bracelets, which are definitely really unique. I would say that if you're going to get something from this collection, maybe start with their pendants, which are the most reasonably priced in the pearly clover collection, considering that these not only, you're not only paying for the heavy, solid, precious metals here, but also the diamond little clovers. So if you wanted to get the pearly bracelet without the clover designs, just with the signature, I think that would be around seven thousand dollars whereas the clover version of that very same design is going to set you back anywhere between twenty to thirty thousand dollars depending on the width that you go for because again you're not only paying for the precious metals and the craftsmanship but you're also paying for those tiny little diamonds so my favorite piece in this collection in terms of the value that it adds to your collection would be the pearl clover pendant but if you're thinking look i love this collection but i'm not willing to spend even that five thousand dollars on one of their pendants where should i begin they do have a ring in this collection which i think would make an amazing stacking piece if you already have some fine jewelry pieces that you love wearing this would be the perfect way to just infuse a little bit of monk leaf into your life which is by picking up the pearl pearls ring i believe it's called which is the most simple design that just features these little gold beads those i think are around 800 dollars depending on which finish of gold you go for obviously white gold is going to be a little bit more expensive than rose and yellow gold but those start at around 800 dollars which i think is really reasonable so if you want to infuse just a little bit of one cleave into your life that might be the best piece to start your journey with. And if you love something truly whimsical, colorful, if you would like to add something to your collection, that will be a true conversation starter. This one is for you, which is going to be the Lucky Animal Clips by Van Cleef, which were actually first introduced in the 1950s. When Van Cleef realized that they were crafting all these incredible, mind-blowing creations for royal families, for the rich and famous, but they really didn't have anything that was more wearable for the everyday person, and I am using that term loosely here, obviously for the person who is willing to spend on designer jewelry. So this was their first attempt to create pieces that were more wearable. So they came out with this line of little animal clips that were crafted of solid gold, which have of course been updated since. So now they not only feature the know-how of Von Cleef of selecting the most defined natural precious stones, but also the little pearl beaded setting. So if you love Von Cleef and what they do, but you are looking for something a little bit more of a head turning piece, something that is a true conversation starter, something that you might have not seen before, their lucky animal clips are still around in quite a wide range of different animals. I mean, you can definitely collect your own zoo made of Von Cleef pieces because they have dogs, cats, lions, 
pandas, some really fun and cute pieces like squirrels do. And there are pieces that you can play around with. You can attach them onto a blazer. You can put them onto your head. I have even seen people put these on their Birkins and Kellys by sliding them onto the sangles of their bags, which is not something that I would recommend that you do because while I have never owned one of these pieces, I have tried them several times on different bags and even my Kelly wallet and I would be incredibly careful because they feature this little kind of wheel looking mechanism on the back that you use to secure the pin which can leave a mark on your bags. It not it not only can leave a mark but I can guarantee that it will leave a mark behind so I would not recommend that you put these on your bags unless it is a bag that you don't mind basically ruining but on a hat on a cap on a coat it is still going to look divine and if you want to have that experience of one cleave but with a piece that is definitely a conversation starter this is the range that i would recommend that you look into my friends this completes today's video all about a one cleave everything you have to know about the brand and what are the pieces that are worth buying i hope you guys enjoy this please let me know in the comment section if there's anything i missed your thoughts and your review on the brand what are your thoughts on one cleave or if there are any other brands that you would like me to do a deep dive on the comment section is open for you as always and while you're down there don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet i really appreciate you being here and watching and i hope to see you back here with a new video really really soon